Trust in the mainstream media is at an all-time low. Okay, maybe not an all-time low, but it's my understanding that it's never, it's, it's, it's really, really low. People don't trust the media. And there was a poll recently where they found something like 70% of people thought that sources were paying news outlets for favorable coverage. And, you know, I think that's unfair. I, I, I'm pretty sure, like, when I made the video, I talked about how it's really, really unlikely these things happen. However, we have this story that Reuters withheld information because Beto O'Rourke was running for Congress. Apparently, they knew that Beto was a member of the Cult of the Dead Cow, a hacker group, for two years and said nothing because they made an agreement with other members of the hacking group that in exchange for interviews and statements, they would withhold the information. This, in my opinion, is unethical beyond belief. While, you, look, the, the guy who wanted to do the story, in my opinion, probably wanted to get a good book, because I'm, I'm pretty sure he's writing a book about it, and he wanted, this is what journalists do, in my opinion, and it's why I, I tweeted this out you know, a week or so ago, that, journal, that there's a ranking of sociopaths in different jobs, journalists is number six. I'm being a bit facetious when I bring that up because I don't think it's necessarily true. But, but think about this. Someone's running for office. It's important we know as much about them as possible. We learned recently that Reuters had this information for years and didn't publish it. And there's some pretty horrifying things that Beto O'Rourke wrote about. He was a teenager. So here's the thing. I'm not going to drag Beto because when he was a teenager, he was trying to be edgy. People do. Uh, you see kids on Twitter all the time. How old is he now? It's like 30 plus years ago. However, it's kind of, I, I can't say I'm surprised in the least bit when I hear that Reuters, one of the biggest, most prominent news organizations in the world, had this information and had an agreement, had an agreement not to publish it because it was running for Congress. Let, well, let's read the story and get the specific details. First, um, I have the Daily Wire's take on it, but I also do have Reuters who, who talks about it. Let's start with the, the, the Daily Wire. Reuters admits they sat on bombshell Beto O'Rourke story for two years. Reuters reported late on Friday night that the reporter who broke the story about Democrat Beto O'Rourke belonging to a hacker group had the story for two years and agreed to sit on it until after O'Rourke's Senate race with Ted Cruz. Two years. The report, published early on Friday, documented O'Rourke's involvement in a hacker group called named Cult of the Dead Cow and included multiple past writings from O'Rourke, some of which were described as disturbing. After more than a year of reporting, Joseph Men persuaded O'Rourke to talk on the record, Reuters reported. In an interview in late 2017, O'Rourke acknowledged that he was a member of the group on the understanding that the information would not be made public until after his Senate race against Ted Cruz in November 2018. Here's the thing. If, if it, it, there's, a, there's, there's, it's, there's gradients, it's not black or white. If I suspect someone may be a member of a group and I can't prove it and like, so, so I'll use this instance specifically because obviously there's, there's nuance, you know, if someone's a member of like a violent group, yeah, they don't deserve any protection. But for Beto O'Rourke, the idea is I want to get him on the record admitting it. So I'll agree to hold off for a few months if, if he agrees to talk on the record. But in this instance, it seems, so, so I can, I can understand that scenario and that's how they try and frame it a bit. But apparently, apparently this reporter knew for years and this is, this is where it gets different. He withheld the information, in my opinion, because he was hoping to get a statement from Beto himself. Instead of publishing and saying, this is true and this is what I know, he said, I'd rather get a statement. And I think it's because the guy's writing a book. But do, do you think that mainstream news outlets and journalists would provide the same kind of benefit to, on average, to, you know, the conser to conservatives or Republicans? I, I think the answer is, to a certain extent, yes, but... So something like 70% of journalist jobs are in blue districts. So I'm going to go ahead and bet it would swing in favor of a certain direction. Don't you think it's important? A actually, let me put it this way. What is the job of journalists? Protect democracy. They're supposed to highlight information to make sure the public is better informed. In this instance, they did the opposite of that. Withheld information until after, his el until after the election because they didn't want to damage his opportunities. Well, let's read on. Men says that he learned about O'Rourke's involvement in the group after he decided to write about the hacking group, which he called the most interesting and influential hacking group in, in history. While I was looking into Cult of the Dead Cow, I found out that they had a member who was sitting in Congress. I didn't know which one. And then I figured out which one it was. And the members of that group wouldn't talk to me about who it was. They wouldn't confirm that it was the person unless I promised that I wouldn't write about it until after the November 
election. A journalist knew specific information that could be damaging to a Democrat and agreed in exchange for statements from other members not to publish the information. So why should we trust news outlets? I'm sorry, especially when you hear these things. I'm surprised Reuters even admitted it. Men says that he approached O'Rourke for an interview about the, about his book and told O'Rourke that the book was going to publish after November and your Senate race is over. And then O'Rourke agreed to give the interview. Wow. Yep. There it is. He's writing a book. What does that mean? It means cash in his pocket. It means he's going to have an exclusive interview. He's going to come out saying, Beto O'Rourke, presidential candidate, ran for Senate, was in Congress, hacker group. And he's going to sell those books instead of informing the public on things that may be pertinent, to, uh, that, that may be relevant and important for them to make a decision. Now, let me be clear. I'm not going to drag O'Rourke for being a member of the cult of the dead cow. I, I grew up in the hacker community. I think it's a non-issue. Actually, I think it makes him kind of cooler. Although Beto O'Rourke is not a skateboarder. That's a lie. You can probably ride a skateboard. But the point is, journalists are supposed to be, they're not supposed to try and make money off books in this way. So you know what? Maybe it's fair to say this guy isn't a journalist, or at the very least, what he did here disqualifies him from whatever, I don't know, whatever prestige he should be earned. You know what? It doesn't matter. It really doesn't. Because this is, in my opinion, this is just another example of a different kind of swamp. We know about the swamp in DC. Well, there's a swamp in New York media. A guy who wants to publish a book, but we're going to publish after no November and your Senate race is over. In exchange, he got that interview. Some of O'Rourke's old writings were discovered on an online discussion forum that he started to that, that he started called Taco Land. One particular piece of writing from O'Rourke was especially troubling as he described mowing down children in a car. This is from Reuters. They say, uh, th there's a quote passage that I'm not going to read, but he talks about slamming all of his weight on his right foot, keeping the accelerator pedal on the floor until he crashed into two kids. Again, I do not think it is appropriate to drag Beto because when he was an edgy teenager, he was posting, you know, ridiculous stories and, and whatever. What's rather shocking to me in this regard is, I guess it's another story of media working with Democrats. Donna Brazil and CNN. The, the, I mean, my God, in 2016, you had the questions the, for a town hall between, Ber it was like a, I don't know if it was a debate, a town hall with Bernie and Hillary, uh, or was the debate questions. And they gave Hillary the questions in advance. What happened recently on CNN? They had a bunch of Democrat lobbyists, interns for special interest organizations that work with Democrats, acting like they were just regular run-of-the-mill Democrats. And, they, and CNN had them ask questions to Bernie Sanders. And after the fact, CNN had to come out and say, we should have been more clear that all of these people asking questions are connected to the Democratic establishment. Is anyone then surprised to find out that information about Beto was withheld because a guy wanted to publish his book? So in Reuters, I, I think Reuters wants to downplay it. I don't, I'm surprised they, 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 they even reported at all. I'm surprised this information has come out. How Reuters uncovered Beto O'Rourke's teenage hacking days. Reuters reporter Joseph Mann exclusively revealed on Friday that Beta O'Rourke belonged to one of the best-known groups of computer hackers as a teenager. Within minutes, his special report was the most popular story, story on Reuters.com. He was picked up by other news outlets, but the origin of the story goes back more than two years. Wow. <laughs> they just admit it. Members of the group, which calls itself Cult of the Dead Cow, project, protected O'Rourke's secret for decades, reluctant to compromise the former Texas congressman's political career. And that I can respect. Absolutely 100%. I would never uh, reveal the private uh, information of anyone I've ever, uh, you know, hung out with in the past. And it's not like any, any of these hacker spaces are necessarily doing anything illegal or wrong. It's just, shouldn't the public have a right to know that you've uncovered this information? My, my opinion is they should. I, I, I'm sorry, like, if something, if something is uh, relevant to an election, right, there's, there's, there's much, less, much, much less restriction on what can be pub published, in my opinion. I will never betray a source. There's a lot of information that I've, I've talked with people that I won't, you know, reveal. I'm protecting them. But I'll tell you what, if, if there are certain people who I know, you know, I've uncovered information, I'm not going to offer them special protection until after they run for office. If someone provides me information before they're running for office, you know, okay, I, I, I'll, I'll, I'll still respect anonymity and I'll respect privacy and all these issues. If I find out that there is a, you know, politician or someone who is a member of some kind of group or organization, I believe it is, it is the responsibility of a news outlet, of a journalist, to reveal that to the public. This, in my opinion, is just 
for profit. It's a guy who said, well, you know, I'll, I want to get that interview. I want to publish a book. After more, more than a year reporting, Men persuaded O'Rourke to talk on the record in an interview in, in late 2017. O'Rourke acknowledged that he was a member of the group on the understanding that the information would not be made public until after his Senate race against Ted Cruz in November 2018. In an interview with Reuters, Senator, senior producer Jane Lee, Men explains how he broke the story and got O'Rourke to open up about his hacking days. I decided to write a book about the cult of the dead cow because they were the most interesting and we read that. So he says that he figured out who it was, but the members of the group wouldn't talk to him. Then he says they wouldn't confirm that it was this person. I think he added this. I'm just going to tell you my opinion. He said he f I figured out who it was. He said they wouldn't talk to me about who it was. Then he said they wouldn't confirm. And when I first read that, I was kind of like, oh, okay, maybe he didn't know for sure. Maybe that's what he's saying. He needed that confirmation, but they only agreed. No, no. He's, he, he said he figured out who it was. I met Beta O'Rourke. I said, I'm writing a book about Cult of Dead Cow. I think it's really interesting. I know you're in the group. Whatever, man. This, this is one of the reasons why I just didn't want to work in media. If, if, Reuters, if Reuters is going to sit on a story, they, they're going to sit on a bombshell because they had an agreement with him because he was going to run for office. Well, what's the, what's the fucking point of being a journalist if you're not going to put politicians' feet to the fire? What's the... We'll leave it there. Uh, whatever. Stick around. I got more videos coming up. I will see you at 1 p.m.